Yeah, I mean, I'm recording now, but basically, I just want to get into a vibe of, uh, like, like it's not even there, but I just, I do feel more on point, you know, and more pressure when I do know, you know, I'm being recorded. Uh, last night, you know, I had no kind of stress or uh, it, didn't, it didn't feel like any effort because, uh, you know, I just, a lot of, uh, inspiration was hitting me and um, I was just talking to you you know it wasn't like I had to make a big thing for somebody or something like it just you just well I mean I don't I don't know if you've ever made a video but like when I make one I just feel extra careful um, just so many thoughts going through my head on how to approach this and that and other thing but uh, I think I would be better if I wasn't that analytical on myself like last night I wasn't very analytical I just kind of um, it, it just it just came very fluidly you know um, but uh, I guess I guess the thing to do here is you could ask me some questions before I start to get off into a tangent so people can get a feel that uh, I am approachable <laughs> because after my last video I may come off like a uh, little, uh, little hard headed and uh, just aggressive I guess but I mean this isn't um, this isn't me how I'm supposed to be right now because that's just what it is um, it's appropriate for this kind of uh, content and anything else is just very um, comical to me like you know people expect you to have this yuppie kind of attitude at all times these days and um, to me that's a big turn off because it's not real like that's what turned me off from going to church. Um, like before I got into like the darker, you know, gothic metal scene and stuff, how that hit me, like I was saying last night, uh, church was like the first kind of dark thing for me because, um, you know, I experienced, uh, we'll just say indirect abuse at home. I'm not really going to get into, get into all that in a recording, but, um, you know, I experienced quite a lot of things at home, very dark things, and then uh, I'd go to the church sometimes, and I, I kind of had a general idea of what what that, you know, religion and faith is about and stuff, and uh, just trying to get your head around what this life is, and it just seemed like uh, a lot of it was not relevant or kind of fluff and stuff. It, it was only the time I heard the preacher talk about the story of Jacob wrestling, wrestling with God that that's the first time I, I could sit down not have my dyspraxia acting up and I could focus on what he was saying not because I want to hear about a story about wrestling with God but I knew it was something ominous um, whether it was metaphoric or not but I actually think that literally happened I'll take you know it's funny you know, these preachers how they've done things and how they've manipulated people on on purpose or not because most men and women they don't iterate things from an objective standpoint they always have to have their agenda behind it because of how certain things make them feel so you're just you're very fortunate if you have someone like you know I was, criti I was critical of Gene Kim in my last video you haven't heard it yet but you know I did kind of call him out because it's very absurd to ignore the Mandela effect like that Unless you're like possessed or something, I don't know how to explain. I'm not. I'm not accusing him of being possessed, or but it was just kind of strange in his last video that he talked about that. Um, it's like a spirit overtook him to make him shut up or not. And like you know, I said before which that video is taken down, but I said that I understand that it's kind of irresponsible to be talking about the Mandela effect in a way 
because it will make people lose their faith but I, that was me trying to cope with things as I say in this video uh, because that just kind of was my experience um, I thought that you could kind of just get into the Bible anyway and God would be somehow the living word would take place and he would kind of navigate you through things because that was kind of my experience I don't want to get into I don't think I have to sh I need to share everything with everybody with my relationship with God like that so um, <clears throat> I don't know it's it's just to, to, to back up a bit first though it's just you're just lucky if you find someone that's going to tell you things in an objective manner because most of them like they'll take it they'll take the parables that you're not supposed to take, supposed to take literal and they'll and they'll make them literal and then they'll take the literal things and make them parables like just to such an extent that it seemed like pretty much everybody at that church that I went to it didn't seem like they really believed in a God it, you know they just like the, and there's nothing wrong with wanting the fellowship and whatever but um, it just it seemed like if you were to actually ask them what they if they actually believed in the creation story of the Bible they would say of course not you know th that was a little bit of a different era back then but it was still this very very secular leaning when you I remember at school or anything when they, I don't know about you but uh, if uh, you press someone about that I mean they would say they believe in God but yeah. but that is a uh, good place to start um, I, I didn't listen to your video of course but uh, I, I assumed you mentioned the corn did you reference the corn? Yeah, I, I tried to. Well, yeah. I mean, it's an older video at this point, but it's, it's still like I mentioned a lot of things that I said last night and stuff. Yeah, in the past few days. Okay. But before I got interrupted, um, the, this most Christians that I, I, I interfaced with and had correspondence with when I was in that in those younger years um, it just seemed like they halfway believed in God but if you actually press them about supernatural topics beyond that um, when it comes to his deeds and his you know his creation in general they, they would lean more towards secular ideology and say well of course evolution is real and all this stuff you know that's that's that was just like a common thing so it just was very not only did I do, you know, not only did the uh, fluff and stuff turn me off because I just didn't seem like a real. I mean, I, I believe that there's truth to that, you know, Jesus is loving and all this stuff, but at the same time, it's like I didn't have my head wrapped around. It. I couldn't articulate what I was feeling, but my, what I was feeling was, if you love somebody, you address the the problems and. Um, in the church I went to, I don't, I don't remember them talking. Well, it was I only dealt with one preacher as, as long as I was there. Um, I want to mention his name, but um, a little Irish guy. But <clears throat> it just it, it never really addressed the relevant issues that I was facing. Or that we face on a day-to-day -day basis really and um, I know it does though you know Psalms has many things that's relatable to this day and you know but as far as and I imagine a lot of churches were like that because I, I went to you know some friends beyond other than mine um, about said names that I shouldn't have there but um and it's it seemed like the same thing across the board and people call this a Bible Belt and stuff. <laughs> the hell it is, you know. Some I know there's some backwoods churches around here that are like, you know, you know, pretty fiery. But uh, a lot of these churches are probably like what I'm, what I've experienced, and it's just fluff and stuff. And it doesn't give you that. I'm not, I'm not saying you should be, you know, like Westboro Baptist Church and be that aggressive, but. Um, I think it's better to be radical than it is to be lukewarm. So I, I'm, I actually would, I don't care to say it, I, I don't agree with everything Westboro Baptist Church does, 
but I'll be more supportive of something like that than someone who is just um, talking a bunch of fluff and stuff in the Bible and not addressing the meat issues and it, it's just it's just to get you this warm fuzzy feeling every week and then you go back to your football and whatever and just stupid stuff the rest of the week now I don't know what they do and I don't care it's probably well, let me not start getting vulgar but you know I, I don't know what these people do anymore and I don't really care but the football thing is still a problem maybe not football in particular but you know, it's just sad that uh, you see some of the most violent stuff in, the, in these games that when they go to those big games and stuff from people that probably normally aren't violent that's the key thing like when you think about um, you know my last video I'm not calling people to be aggressive I show a lot of well I don't it's just, it's just really one music video that I show a lot of riots and stuff um, but I'm not trying to bring that back into the fold I don't want people to riot and everything like that I think that's pretty counterproductive that's what they want you to do tear up your own fucking community and stuff if I you know I'm not going to repeat what I, I said in that video and what I suggest to do not because it's controversial and I, I care to be con if I already said it it's there and I'm not deleting it but I'm just not going to get back into that again um, it, it's just there has to be a level of backbone and luckily for me I had that ingrained in me without having to hear a preacher tell me to do this or that but some people don't or most people don't when they feel the authority is telling them to be soft and the general consensus of society is saying it's good to be soft and weak and effeminate in a just a very abstract um, because most people today have no idea what real effeminate, femininity is, and women, sorry, I have to go here. They're you know the ones that are on this weird liberal side of things. They go as far as to glorify drag queens, which I'm not going to sit here, even though I despise what they're doing with indoctrination of children. Um, <clears throat> I'm not really going to be like Westboro Baptist Church and say. I'm not going to say they deserve hell. I'm not going to. Say, I don't really. I'm not really going to go there. It's just what I'll say is the fact of it is, you know, what a drag queen is is like in a like a cartoon exaggeration of, of like a sexualized version of some qualities of women. You know, it's just this is a clown kind of thing. And for women, I don't think they should be offended all the time. But it's funny how they're selectively offended at so-called toxic masculinity but they never address the, the the real the only time i ever seen toxic masculinity is in rap music and they don't ever talk about that because it consists of uh, blacks mostly and stuff and it's a black music and they just are they're not genuinely upset about anything they're npcs controlled to um just wreak havoc against the uh, whatever the technocrats don't like and it's just whatever they don't like really this they become these android kind of things that attack you for what I, I, that's the only way I can put it it's it's whatever they want them to be mad at and it's it's the NPC update they support the current thing that's what it is every single time it's not anything authentic or it, it doesn't matter if if the if the cabal or whatever feels threatened about this or that they've thought enough about it and that's why they attack that and that's that's the um, secondary or primary uh, result of it is they will radicalize these women and these feckless men to shut down a good old concert that they don't like because it has World War II themes like Marduk or uh, whatever because they know that they don't want any kind of dissent so it's it's just disgusting that they have they know the power of preaching, but these preachers don't, and these preachers don't even. Um, so they you know that some of them that do this. I don't know about these days because it looks pretty diabolic. You know, Satan is definitely in the church these days, but I don't think 
I would never accuse a preacher that I grew up with of trying to uh, soften us up. Or I don't think he meant to soften us up. It's just he made the wrong choice, and this they just we were in too much of a peaceful time. Not in my opinion. We just were lucky to live the way we were while America was waging war overseas and stuff, which I didn't like. And just dumb stuff. No point. We didn't need to do any of that. We weren't under a threat. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure we still have the best tech and stuff pretty much, but especially back then we did compared to every, everywhere else. And some, um, some, some old boys from the desert really isn't going to be a problem, you know. So I'm not going to get back into, uh, oh, I never really touched on 9 11, but that's, you know, that's why I feel about that is, you know, even if you were to believe that was real, well, we we made a big fuck up if we allowed that to happen. But I don't I don't understand how you could ever allow that to happen again because it just it doesn't make any sense with all the technology and the stuff we have. But uh, I'm not really going to get into that. Of course, I think it's inside job, and you know that's that was one of the first things that woke me up and stuff. But um, yeah, these preachers just really dropped the ball and. They saw the same amount of things I did, and I was the first one passionate about it. It seemed um, that I ever saw, you know, and that just really disturbed me. That grown men just uh, were that feckless and stuff. So I gravitated towards more extreme things that I would find on the internet, like Sentimental Corp, as I talked about in my last video. people in bands that really uh, outspoken but they usually were outspoken about Christianity and stuff especially in the 90s you know black metal scene went as far as to burn down churches some of them and stuff and they had probably a few terrorist cells and stuff pretty much um, that maybe never did anything but they just had that potential to do things and I, I guess that's what how Antifa and them justify them fighting fascism because they think you know that could turn into uh, just a, a more of a widespread kind of thing. Well, do they care about churches? I mean, I know I know this is a kind of a straw man argument. I, I just said this to myself, but uh, I mean, their thing is, is is Nazism. Well, it's possible. I mean, that's just the way life is. You know, if people can just become radicalized sometimes like that, that happens. You don't really need uh, technocrats for that to happen. You know, sometimes, um, you know, like that man song goes, uh, militant men in peaceful times attack themselves. And that's basically what we've seen from every angle, whether it's a feckless type of man or it's a militant type of man. And when you're in the West like we are in this comfort, you usually attack yourself in some way or another. You know, I think those are is just really profound lyrics. Um, it's just, it's a pretty sinister album or EP and song, but um, it's uh, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunately metal and stuff. Uh, I hate to say it. You know, uh, like this guy I was talking to um, last night really the first one I ever talked to he no, he was I, he became a part of my audience now so I consider him a part of my audience uh, that I really interfaced with I know that may sound weird to people listening right now but you know he just said how he detested metal and, and everything but I, I didn't argue with him and I never would you know on that kind of personal level but I just have to say it from my channel and, and from from my experience unfortunately metal harkens back to the personality of Johnny Cash with the man in black kind of thing and I'm not saying you gotta hold a cross on your back that hard and be a thundercloud and you know but it's it's still it's better than being feckless like there's there's really no arguing with it it's, it's better to be very militant than it is feckless because it kills you know you're it's counterproductive 
you either don't stand up for yourself or I don't even know how to reason with the, the time we live in now where you have this weird outgroup reference because um, not even gays back in the day I didn't know many gays back in the day but you know the ones I, I did uh, know or uh, see online and stuff they didn't care about worshiping blacks or black lives matter and they were just they felt like they were these horrible horrible people for being white and stuff they did their own things and some of them were probably kind of racist and stuff and that's fine if they you know i don't care who's racist like the only time you should be worried about racism is like you know like the left says you know it's uh systemic and you know people with power but i don't <clears throat> you know when all people with power that actually push that stuff well you know who they are, <laughs> and uh, they hate every one of us, including their own race. And I'm not going to get into that again. It's it's just how it is. And God to say, you know, it, it is, you know, God's chosen people is is the chosen people, and therefore Satan, you know, he was that that's that's going to be his likely target to infiltrate, obfuscate the plan of God, and, you know, that's why they become synagogues of Satan if they do. And I would never blame all Jewish people for what a handful of uh, elitists do. Just like, but, but, but let, me, let me say it like this, but why, it's like these white women and these white men, why are they so gung-ho to blame themselves and their so-called white elite? You know these evil old white men and stuff and now I'm not gonna brag on white people because I'm, I'm pretty uh, I do detest that kind of personality I mean there's there's no way to reason with it anymore but what I what I could say at least in a phase of it when it was still kind of an innocent idiocracy stage is that that altruism kind of shows that well at least those that are sincere and not just virtue signaling just for narcissistic virtue signaling points they um, I mean it's just a sincere thing like you you would really kind of sacrifice yourself just to show that you're not part of an evil group you don't want those sins of your father and I, you know I'm not trying to but you know, I know most leftists are not really like that they're not true to, they really just uh, they're weird I don't know how to reason with it I don't want to think about it too much because it would make me very upset but um, at this point it just seems I mean <laughs> I, I've, I really took the filter off my last few and I guess I should just continue doing that because I think it's important to just press a counterbalance so hard because you just don't see that anymore and you know for a long time now and I've already kind of tipped the scales you know on my Twitter campaign which I'm not going to go back into and I hope to never revive that kind of evil spirit and things but this is how it was then and I was you know this is how it was but you try to think of well how a counterculture would be in the 2000s or the 90s or whatever, you know, whether it's George Carlin, you know, he says a lot of things against conservatives. Well, he, I guess he talks a little bit about both, but he, he does talk a lot of things about conservatives back in the day, and he's right, actually. And these guys on, you know, the right wing now, they'll bring that up and say, well, he sounds like a leftist. No, you don't understand. It was a different paradigm back then, such as it's a different paradigm now, and I, and I feel like I need to tap into... A kind of uh, not not that not that it's a fake personality, but I, I need to really unleash my subconscious and what I really feel because I'm not trying to be a George Carlin or someone fresh. But uh, why say anything at all unless you're going to bring something fresh to the table? Is the point? You know why? Um, what's the point in making videos if it's just for content creation and making a soy face in every thumbnail and you know what are you doing with your life and, and what are you doing for the future and betterment of things you know you got you got uh, the whole world listen to you <laughs> you know I couldn't imagine having a hundred thousand plus people I've had a hundred thousand plus views before on a fight video not my I wasn't fighting but just a compilation I've got 
you know, I've, I've had kind of a viral video back in the day and stuff, but, you know, that's a lot. I didn't think about that like I think about stuff now and as, you know, more of a grown man than I was, you know, I felt like I was pretty grown even back then in ways, but, um, it's, you should, I take every little view into consideration. That's why I, not many people would, well, I don't know about it anymore, but back then not a lot of people saw that Twitter and those videos are gone now, but uh, for those that are afflicted, I, you know, I do feel terribly sorry if it did lead anybody astray because I was led astray at the time and, you know, hurt people just hurt people and that's how it is. Um, but I'm not trying to become a preacher myself, but if I could just take the reins or, it's just the point, if, if I'm going to make a video, uh, my initial videos as of yet, and, th and this in this revival of, of, of me trying to make videos I've, I've been very sluggish of I've, I've been very off point and I've, I've mentioned that a lot and it's the truth I'm not saying I'm even speaking my best right now but I'm doing a lot better than I was and that's really I don't feel like I'm putting something out there unless it's I'm, a, I'm at least trying to go 90% on it and I say 90 because what do you what else do you people want now I'm not getting angsty against people that actually care about stuff but it's just you know like that guy said to me last night he said you should you should refine yourself a little more why, why do I need to refine myself you can see what I'm showing you this should turn the tables on things real fast you take you can you take you take what you want from it or the whole thing and run with it tell people about it in this nonsense but at the same time, I don't want to interfere with any kind of prophetic things because I don't know where I fit into the mix of things. This is a pretty big deal. And I may, I may, I may uh, word that and phrase that in a very nonchalant manner, but uh, I've dealt with this for many years now and it, it is nonchalant to me. It's just like breathing, you know, this kind of uh, vision I have and everything. It's just, um, it's just, it's just like breathing. Now. It was not like a traumatic Oh God, this is what's going to happen. Or am I going to be killed if I talked about this kind? Of, you know, I'm, I'm over that. You know, I've, I've been through a lot now since then. So, um, but I, I'm also considerate of how people could also have that kind of experience I did, and that's why I opened my email up. Um, but as of yet, nobody's tried to talk to me, so I don't know, and I don't really care either. But if uh, I, I do care, if you're sincere you're trying to just figure things out and you happen to just come across this channel and maybe it's a little you bit off a little too much you could chew with it you know you didn't really expect that and I'm willing to try to help you best I can is, is all I'm saying I'm not looking for a bunch of buddies or something that's just I mean having friends is cool but it's I, I'm, I'm just I'm just there to help if you need it but really the best person you can talk to is God but um I, I'm the only one I know that has talked about this and exposed it other than maybe some uh, people deep in the cult or um, this um, occult celebrity lifestyle like I see even maybe I shouldn't drop James, <laughs> drop names you know I've, I've said moon I mentioned moon spell I mentioned uh, maybe some other ones but uh, let's let's not go there anymore I guess I shouldn't I just don't feel like saying stuff like that but you know as I said, there's many subliminals of the Taurus field and, and a lot of things and um, I'm, I'm not about to say I'm the first person to reveal it or something absolutely not but for some reason I'm the first person to, to openly reveal it I should say everything else is subliminal I have never seen it in a book I've never I'm, I don't I'm not really in the books but I'm just saying I haven't I haven't I haven't seen it anywhere you know and I, I've been into conspiracy stuff for a long time and this seems like a really easy self-evident truth that just isn't there for most people and it, it really takes a trained eye to start to see that stuff um, And I don't, and I cannot, I still to this day cannot tell you how I, how I came to see it, how I came to notice a simple thing like that. Um, 
it's, it's either scales drop from my eyes and I attain new vision because I, I try to say I, I vaguely remember certain times I would be on a I remember being, being in the back of a truck probably being in the car when I was a kid and it looked like the sun and stuff was following me but I couldn't say exactly for sure but the only thing I can say is I don't think it's a Mandela effect um, I don't believe it's like singularity in that way that I initially may I may have thought I, I brainstormed everything you could think of about it almost probably um, and I just warn people that want to brainstorm about it beyond the Bible you're making a mistake <clears throat> because you venture outside the Bible are you gonna are you gonna believe the inspired word of God or are you gonna believe the inspired word of uh, just someone who some Gnostic that thinks they're God you know, I mean, that's that's a lot to go into. It's a big debate. I don't think I'm ready to make right now on this this recording, but um, I could do it. Uh, I'm 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 ready at some point to do it, but I just I'm giving people a fair you know word to the wise is that you don't really want to. There's you you don't have to take my word for it, but you will come to find I'm right about what I'm saying about that you don't want to venture into narcissism you don't want to venture into simulation theory to that kind of extent and uh, this that and other it's simple just to say well even in a secular sense that okay God must exist this is a fishbowl reality I am kind of taken from another youtuber when I'm saying this um, because I thought it was a really good analogy and um, in this fishbowl the, even the even the concept of creation could be limited to this fishbowl and outside of that when you try to because when you'll start to think well how's how was God made and that's when Gnosticism tries to say oh well he had a mother and all this you know and it gets into uh, the Queen of Heaven stuff and then you know the Catholic they're uh, really into it's really diabolic stuff and where did she come from you can just keep going through that ad infinitum what you have to break it down to is God has to be unfathomable or you're dealing with something that is like a demigod figure and that's where you know Gnostic story comes into you're either dealing with a God that is and, and I'm not saying it's open for interpretation I, I, I know the Bible is accurate so I'm not I'm not I'm not becoming secular as I speak and saying that um, well maybe it is a female God Sophia and I'm not saying this is what it is but that's you're at least at a better place if you're if you're going that far you know but the demiurge thing is just the absolute straw man and it makes no sense because if if that's the case then Sophia must be a demigod too and that's just one that's just one uh, type of story of there's many different Gnostic stories I guess but like the Sophia one that John Lamb Lash pushes well I mean that's very concerning if Sophia is like the goddess of everything and she was overthrown by some demigod she aborted you know like not I say aborted but you know it was a it was an accident you know he was an accident and he somehow over what that doesn't make any sense just like this Lucifer story that these preachers tried to tell us that was never in the Bible there was no kind of war in heaven like that with Lucifer anyway I'm, I don't know <laughs> what exactly happened in the uh, in the gap in time that's that's missing in the Bible? You know, I, I firmly believe in gap fact, not theory, that uh, we are living in a post-apocalyptic world with probably multiple resets. Um, and darkness was upon the face of the deep because Lucifer destroyed the firmament and stuff. And I'm not going to go into all that, but you know, it's that seems to be the implications. But. Uh, beyond that there's there's really no information on what exactly and you may be able to figure out through other means I'm not saying everything is strictly Bible there's some truth in other things too but that's where I'm, I want to kind of <laughs> not throw the towel in but I'm, I'm going to be kind of humble and say I can't really speak beyond that honestly because I mean, there's just there's so many uh, 
see that that's where I could never be a preacher like that because I'm I'm very humble and I'm also learning myself about things. Um, but I I just I do know that God wouldn't just make a book like that. But he th that is the key book, okay. And he would not make it to where you need to go outside of it for a salvation. Um, like like a, a salvation requirement and stuff. He wouldn't he wouldn't put you in a situation like that if that's the Bible. The Bible is should be it. And like you know this when I was explaining this stuff to this uh, this guy last night. You know um, he was very bewildered and he said you know well, what's next you know. And all I could say is well are you saved? And I know people are gonna laugh at that because I say that all the time and I'm, but that's the truth it's like what I'm what I'm showing you and telling you people is just really you know this Taurus filled thing and stuff that's that's just a, I believe it's biblical you know kingdom of heaven is within and stuff and all that it's definitely biblical but it's not a salvation issue for you to see it I don't think and stuff as far as I know as far as I know, uh, I know it, that that could be the key this could be the key to separate separate the wheat from the tares. If the Mandela effect doesn't do it, I think this might do it. Personally. But I don't know. But I don't think God would be that cruel or abstract and strange for for it to be a requirement to for you to know a bunch of esoteric, extra biblical kind of things. But I do believe there is certain things you can learn outside the Bible, like because it doesn't explain everything in life in the Bible. It really doesn't. I'll be I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. It doesn't, and that's what had frustrated me and led me back into Gnosticism a few times because I, I I wondered why it didn't explain not things in my personal life. I was I wasn't brat enough to say, well, why didn't it, you know the abuse kind of abusive things I experienced? Why didn't it say that or you know warn me about that? But um, you know these bigger controversial things. Whether it's uh, slavery, um, war, you know, uh, certain wars that don't seem to be mentioned in the Bible that that could have been mentioned or something to prevent things. Every a lot of things could have been prevented that the Bible mentioned, but it didn't. It, it uh, it's it's more there for the key characters for us to. Um, Kind of reflect on, I guess. I, you know, I couldn't. I couldn't. That's a big thing to describe. You know, what's the the absolute purpose of every little thing in the Bible? That's 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 too big for me to say. So I'm I'm gonna have to kind of throw the towel in there. But um, I don't think it's that complicated. And at the same time, either like on why um, maybe never maybe every Roman war wasn't mentioned in the Bible or whatever. You know, whatever you want to say is like. I guess I guess what I do want to say about that is how I feel anyway, and this is my feeling is that God wants you to have more of an open-ended experience sometimes, not all the time. It's kind of like fate mixed with free will, and uh, that's really the only way I could look at it. Is and I think some things are very self-evident, like I was saying earlier today, that um, God doesn't tell you that you know. The stove eye when it's red don't touch that means hot you know this is something I don't, you know it, it, it's just kind of silly when you when you deviate that far but this is how like people fall into narcissism and, 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 and anti-christianity it's it's really small things like that that lead into bigger um, things um, that makes you just lose your religion and stuff and I just I don't think it's that complicated they just they just make it that way because they don't believe in good and evil like the Bible said this is a realm of good and evil and you know you're just a mere vessel you do have your identity and stuff and that's why you are possessed I mean that's why you can be possessed or you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and you are constantly waging war with both sides you have to. I mean, you have to choose which one you're gonna you're gonna wage war with. I guess you know the 
devil on the left or the angel on the right or whatever and I don't know. I mean, I think that's just the easiest way to look at it if you just yield to the fact that this is a realm of good and evil. And that's all you're going to learn about. That's all the influences you're going to have. There is no, there is no in between, really. So you should always question where those thoughts are coming from because they might not be your own. You know, as I showed with these demonic entities coming into play, they may have always been here. And what my, the thing I never got to say is. Now, I think when they show the like a physical appearance of themselves to scare you, that's just one side of things. What else do they do to you? Can they get in your head and you know put thoughts in your head? I mean, because they do seem to be telepathic and uh, you know all kinds of very um, omnipotent things compared to us. So I mean, they can make you do a whole lot of things without like just completely possessing you. They can just influence you like who knows what. So. I guess I'll chill out for right now and let you talk. <laughs> That's just a warm up. I'm, I'm not going to do that again. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that was a uh, grandiose warm up. You covered a lot of things. Um, I guess to summarize some things that you talked about. <laughs> Like, uh, I guess for people just to uh, get clarification on, you know, he's not really trying to be critical of Gene Kim, but like in a, in a negative sense, it, it's just, uh, it's, for me, it's a disappointment is for people to gloss over important issues that are controversial, like the Mandela effect and topics like that and just in general I think what turned me off from God as well in these churches these churches don't really talk about the end times as they should like uh, brought up with the the extra fluff and the social aspect of things and in these times you know the Bible is changing the Mandela effect can't be questioned it's happening and and it's not a silly thing for him to say are you saved for him to ask people that if if they correspond and they want to know the truth because that's ultimately going to be the most important factor and you know, a lot of people might get turned away in the future from these Mandela effects in the Bible. And you know, that could be a very devastating and, and sad thing to witness. So I guess my biggest recommendation is for everybody to read the Bible now. And keep in mind you know certain things that are talk, talked about through your first read through then maybe sometime down the line read it again see what's changed but uh I think also we've been looking at this in a kind of one, one dimensional measurement because I'll just touch on how, I, how I've looked at things well the implications are you know they're telling us we have false memories and if people just give into that will they start prescribing drugs for false memories and how could what could they concoct with their sorcery as the Bible calls pharmacia sorcery what could they concoct uh, would it be something like off of uh, I don't know if they actually have pills for dreams like this, like on the uh, Freddy Krueger movie, Freddy Krueger movies, um, but would they somehow, they probably already have drugs like this, but somehow erase your memories or some weird, you know, I don't know what it would be, but just, uh, if, if, it just seems like um, 
the the, demo, the democracy of things is the most devastating to me because democracy is the majority rule even though they talk about supporting minorities no they don't if you supported minorities you would support the intellectual kind of people because they they make up the least amount of the population well it doesn't matter what race they are i mean any any intellectual that make up the least amount of the population that's who you'd be supporting and um <laughs> i'm not going to get into how i feel about that you know but uh, it's true you know I, I, that's that's always been my main focus is um, I mean people everybody matters to me that cares about themselves and, and, and life and everything you know they just they generally care you know everybody matters but um, they have twisted that with the Black Lives Matter thing into just this ugly abject emotional blackmail by saying Black Lives Matter like you don't but at the, at this point, um, I mean, that could have a different kind of effect eventually. Like people could become numb to that as well. I don't really care though. That's blacks' problems that think that way and have that kind of uh, insecurity complex that they would need the whole world to cater to them to make them feel like they matter. That's that's sick. I couldn't imagine living like that. And uh, I am using a little bit of filter here, unlike my last video, and I don't really care. I don't think it's appropriate to go off the deep end all the time because um, that kind of rage is unnecessary even in times like this you have to always uh, find a way to not become that primal um, or you'll you'll make mistakes you know that's what I've noticed for myself is when I get a little too mad I, I, I can overlook deeper things but um, it really in stark contrast uh, I think anger is a relevant emotion that had been has been blotted out from most people these days and uh, really I, I just have to be honest about the black problem um, they're the ones who hold the most anger these you know I, I've uh, I've seen like in the 2000s when I made this compilation videos I mean that just was so much anger all the time even I experienced um, so much a uh, lockstep anger and retaliation towards even the slightest things looking at you wrong whatever um, and it seems like you know blacks and the rap music culture you know the gangster rap music culture when I say blacks of course I don't mean all blacks but I don't really care to say it like that anymore I'm kind of poking the bear at you because it's like I don't care what you think and you're going to make me out to look like a demon anyway so it doesn't really matter you know this is how this is how people should have an attitude towards things because they don't like you they're going to want to get you fired or your, your life ruined anyway so yeah you should just say you're racist honestly yeah i mean what does it matter what is that to you if i'm racist um i'm not saying i am but i'm just saying that's the attitude most people should have these days um and they kind of used to it's like well that's none of your business if i don't want to be around you because i don't like you that's you're kind of weird for wanting to impose yourself on me you know and be around me that's you don't have any kind of you know i thought liberals was all always about uh, safe space and jazz hands and uh, respect my pronoun and all this stuff but they just want to be authoritarian and um, follow the current thing as i was saying earlier they just they uh they're just drones for the current thing and that's the only way you can look at it because um there is never a rhyme or reason it's just whatever these technocrats feel threatened by they will hardwire the the women and the men and the children if they can get a hold of them and they will um, just create these <laughs> this this hard-coded um, download into the NPC uh, to, to just make them be against you by any means and they they use a lot of emotional um, evangelism and it's just really ugly you know I, I don't I don't get upset with the technocrats that bad because and I never have I've said this since I was you know a very young age it's, uh, I've always been more upset at the people that give into that because I never had that problem I recognize real people and real you know and I think 
the worst kinds of people in my life were those that tried to get me to um, be the aggressor or even retaliate in a sense out of rallying me up emotionally like they just they will have you like a puppet on a string if they can control you emotionally like that and this is the kind of people that you're dealing with and they just eat it up it's like they they find it fashionable fashionable to be at each other's throat and non-stop over right and left politics like it was a, like it's a sport and it's like it's their winning team and stuff so I mean this is very basic stuff I put this on bit shoot you know everybody's heard that before that's why I say um, if I want to bring something fresh I have to bring something uh, personality wise and um, information and stuff that's not generally being talked about I have I'm, I do quote a lot of people as I speak about things click uh, you know I recently brought up Stavely and, and stuff like that but um, I don't think it's bad to toot the horn about similar things you're experiencing and uh, always trying to uplift people that are on a similar frequency as you and I will continue to do that even if they don't do it for me until they say something wrong about me or something I will continue to do that I guess um, because I don't it's not a clout chasing thing um, it's just uh, me being me really even when it comes to the personality things I'm not going to develop a split personality just to do this this is me being me it's just really uh, tapping into uh, a voice that I haven't lacked but I haven't used um, and that's just what I'm trying to present and I'm not going to sit here and try to explain too much about that you know there's it's just uh, some uh, some people can just be too too critical of things when they, they should really appreciate the simple things. I don't know. <clears throat> like, how, how are you going to... I know I made that video a little bit of uh, messed up audio at the end with the the Defendi Plasma song on my uh, uh, I warn people about this now and in the Hegelian dialectic or however I worded it well why don't you appreciate what I've shown anyway and no you know that's if, if, if I got my ears hurt a little bit or sh I got a little bit of a shock value I ain't gonna worry about that I'm, I'm worried about everything else you just showed me you know this it's just weird how these people I'm not saying all my audience from BitChute in particular especially is, has this attitude but you know I had some feedback like that last night and it's just uh, like that's that's not all he, he had uh, to, to take from it but it just was kind of it just kind of rubbed me wrong because it's like who cares I don't care about something like that I, you know I might, I might bring it up in a jest like that's that was kind of loud dude but I wouldn't I wouldn't be like Ooh, that's scary or like you know if you're scared just say you're scared in general don't that's that's a big thing it's it's a very animalistic primal thing they internalize and they like they ignore the bigger picture and they'll just like internalize a weird fear of that's 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 a big thing I'm gonna throw in a towel now because I, I, I will get very stumped trying to say what I'm trying to say there I mean it's just uh, very it's a very primal fear and they don't ever get into the bigger picture of it and if they did they might man up and be able to stomach it because I didn't ask for this either those of you who feel like well I can't unsee this I don't I didn't ever say you could unsee it and I have rubbed it in people's faces before. I honestly have, but on BitChute, I haven't, I haven't rubbed it in anybody's face, as far as I know. I maybe shared it with Mr. E, I think, and that's it. But uh, I don't. But I don't really care that I've shut it in people's faces either. But I'm just saying, for those of you that have that, I haven't even done that to you. You have nothing to say to me, really. You know, 
you should think of why you know what led you to this point in general you know and look at it from a bigger angle because we have downplayed ourselves to such a low level a very a spiritual level that we just don't consider who we are and who made us and if, if there was something before this life and stuff as the Bible does suggest you know he says I knew you before you were in the womb and stuff unless that's changed too that's how I remember it I don't I'm not I'm not someone who's partial to the idea of past lives exactly um, I've, I think I've pretty much ruled that out but there is some kind of past life in uh, his, his domain that we must have been in before or something so I mean if you don't stick to a biblical objective reality of things you're going to lose your mind in this Mandela affected world and that's all there is to it so you better get it while it's still fresh I mean not fresh but while it's still got a little bit of uh, rational um, it's, it's still got a, it's still got some of that literary masterpiece to it you, sh you should get it while it's still there because um, I went off on a big tangent on the one dimensional aspect of things is that um, again the one dimensional aspect of this is so as the Bible changes it would be hard to completely erase the truth of the Bible because what well, you know, most of us will always remember the at least the, the general surface things that we remember, you know, like the, the giveth and taketh away versus change and, you know, the stuff that we sometimes say every day or hear every day. And um, that's one way to look at it. But I just thought of a different way is um, how do you know that I kind of I kind of lost my train of thought earlier on what I was going to say about this unfortunately but it, it now sounds more basic with what I'm going to say now but I'll just have to run with it because I can't I can't remember um, basically we could wake up tomorrow and just be in a different world it, you know I most people are thinking this is going to be like a gradual change in the things probably but we could really just wake up in a different world tomorrow but that's not what I, I had something more profound to say it was on the tip of my tongue but that's a very basic version of it is that we could uh, wake up and the um, the corn and all that stuff in the Bible will start to make sense because we'll start to see um, a historical rearrangement of things I don't know what that would look like and no idea but if this is a, if the, you know Satan or a God allowing this to happen or God himself in some cases whatever this entity is doing this it's already changed historical events and stuff what is stopping it from just completely changing tomorrow from what you're used to I don't know what that would look like I can't I can't tell you and to me <clears throat> I mean that's already happened hasn't it with people <laughs> that got killed in uh, torpedo alley Th that's a very complex issue when you have new people that are killed and stuff with the Mandela effect and resurrected like uh, is a way to look at it like Nelson Mandela himself I don't I don't remember how I personally remember if Nelson Mandela was in prison or he died or whatever happened to him and, um, and forgive me if he wasn't in prison I may be thinking of just what Biden was talking about he said he was in prison I think that was a lie but anyway uh, what does what's the implications of 5,000 people that we never well I don't know we never heard of or not we just never heard of that event and now they're dead 
did they have children and grandchildren? They must have had, most of them probably had grandchildren and children if they were alive before them, before it got erased. I mean, replaced with that event in their lives. <laughs> did they just get erased? I mean, it's very strange to think about. And I honestly don't know what people go through on a, on a, some people go through on a uh, personal basis because, you know, I, I've seen, I've seen videos at this point to not make the tourist field thing look small, but I mean, it's, it's made me feel a lot comfortable talking about that because it just, well, I'm, I'm seeing that people are going through a lot of things these days. And it's just remarkable we don't wake up with uh, <laughs> web, webbed hands and feet or you know any kind of weird thing but our anatomy has changed internally I don't know about externally that much but internally the skull uh, eye sockets in particular um, ribs and stuff organs and, and rearranged you know we're, we're very we're very lucky at this point it hasn't been something so strange that we just couldn't stomach it now personally from my experience and I don't want people to feel this way like I did this is how I felt and I'm trying to get you not to go through what I did because I don't feel like we have time to be playing around with something like that and I don't think anybody really deserves what I went through and I guess that's saying, well, I'm not saying I deserve what I went through, what I went through either, but I'm just saying, um, you know, what I went through when I experienced the Taurus field is, um, I mean, actually seeing it visibly in, the, in that sense, of so-called parallax of things, um, a very traumatic experience. This only example I could think of is of waking up one day and everything's completely following you around and different. But I'm talking about waking up with, uh, you know, another arm, or you're in another bed, or you're in another house, or I don't know. And why would it just be that? That's still not that chaotic to me. That's still very precise. Chaotic would be like uh, waking up in midair somewhere. Just really, ra just really random, weird stuff. So. Chaos is not reigning in this in this uh, in this Mandela effect. This is very strategic and surgical replacements and 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 uh, different iterations of things. And you know, it, it's it's just very very technical. This is a handiwork of something very intellectual. Sometimes it doesn't look that intellectual to me. Some of it's quite goofy, and that's why I turned myself off of it for a long time. Because it's like, how could you have all this stuff happen and nobody gives a damn? And I'm not going to repeat that. Or you know, that that was a key thing in my last video. It's like you know, the whole world can change like that, but you know, nothing nothing revolted into anything until George Floyd died, and that's just uh, the most pitiful thing probably ever in existence. I believe that truly. That had to. They had to if, if if there's another if there's something worse than that maybe the death of Christ isn't that something to think about that's that's an ugly parallel but I, I had to go there in ways like that is probably the the this most disgusting death blow death knell however you say it um, ever to be conceived because it was a, it was something conceived. They had that plan for a long time. If you look into the esoteric side of, of George Floyd's death and stuff, um, it's just very strange. But it did happen. It moved people in an animalistic way, and uh, that's so many people that that's why I didn't really care to say in my last video. I wasn't talking about everybody, of course, but the people that I, I were referring to, I, I, I still mean it when I said that you're 
you're already in hell. You're just not really physically there yet. Or however I worded it. You get what I mean. You know, these people are already dead to me. Beyond it. And they literally are NPCs because they function off of holy, whatever the media tells them to identify with holy. And then the other side of it, I believe, is purely demonic. So these aren't people anymore, as we once knew them. Yeah, there's there's really not much to say beyond that last video. That's why the next one, uh, if I upload this in between, it, uh, if whatever, uh, it won't. Uh, it'll be about a particular subject matter rather than uh, just uh, you know painting a worldview of things. It, it's it's going to be about a particular subject, a particular phenomena. Oh, I already gave a teaser of that. I forgot. Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's going to be about the NPC stuff I've seen. Um, and I, nobody's ever, other than Regato Bonner, or however you say his name, I've never seen anybody uh, talk about this once again. So, I may toot my horn about other content, or not content creators, but other truthers and stuff, and I mean to say that. That's pretty awkward, but uh, I, I do toot my horn about some other people's stuff, but I, I have brought my own stuff to the table, and I will continue to do that. Um, and I don't care how good my presentation is in ways I feel like as long as you can understand what I'm saying as long as you can process what's on the screen that I'm showing that's all there is to it because uh, like me and you were saying earlier I mean we when we got into this a long time ago um, we had watched videos of very poor quality um, very uh, it's very poor quality I, that's all I can say about it I felt like most people that I got into had good presentation I'm not about to name names because you know I've, I've really advanced from the people I used to watch back then um, but uh, they didn't have to all be like Alex Jones and have all this uh, big uh, production for me to be interested in them um, this uh, it's just true